Okay. Thank you so much for joining me tonight for our easy Italian meal. Um, this is one of our fav one of my favorites. And I love to eat, but I don't like to cook. I'm a good cook, but I like things that are easy. And um, so we can spend time enjoying time around the table and, and good food rather than a lot of time knocking ourselves out cooking. There's time for that, but this is an easy summer meal on a hot summer night. This is, this is a great meal to make. Now the recipe is on the website. The PDF is on there and you can download the recipe. Um, this is a recipe of my, my grandmother's um, and I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about um, a little history behind it. It's called spaghetti with tuna. Um, and then here are some of the ingredients that I told you about. Um, so, we have uh, linguine, we have Locatelli Romano cheese. We're going to be using one can of Italian crushed tomatoes. We have olive oil. I have a little left in here and a whole other bottle I'll be, I'll be starting. And then we have tuna. I use bumblebee, um, the solid white albacore tuna. So what I did this morning is I, prepared, let me see where I'm showing this, where it shows the best. I prepared um, this this morning. So I'm going to show you how to prepare it, but this way it will, it'll take less time um, to cook, just like they do on TV. So I'm gonna ask my assistant, Sal Vitor, my husband, to put that in that pan. And then we're going to start a new, a new pan, okay? So the first thing we're going to start with is onions. Okay, so I've sliced these thinly sliced onions. There's one onion. Um, and then there's also, it's hard for you to see, there are thinly sliced cloves of garlic I've put in here too. So depending on your, you know, your taste for garlic, um, honestly, I don't always use garlic in this dish, but it's in the original recipe. So I decided to use it in, in, in the recipe that I shared with you. Um, sometimes garlic, I'm, you know, I'm not crazy about too much of it, but I put uh, about four to six cloves of garlic in here. So I'm going to, let me just move this out of the way. Again, this is a new thing for me, cooking with cameras and as I'm sure we've all been doing. I think I'm a little more nervous about this than 50 children in story time in the park. So let's just pull this over here so you can see what I'm doing. Now this doesn't want to comply. We'll do it like that. Can everybody see now what I'm doing? Okay. What I'm doing is I'm going to put the olive oil in. So let me just check that again. I also do everything by feel. It's Recipe calls for five to six tablespoons of olive oil, but I just am used to eyeballing it, but that's what I did when I got this recipe ready. I measured everything out just to make sure that I was telling you accuracy. So it's gonna cover the pan, put more of the oil in there. And then I'll let you take a look at it. I'll put the right burner on. There we go. So, so you can see there is the onion and the garlic, and we're going to saute that now. Okay, so I'm just going to stir it. And the, the smell is heavenly. Cooking garlic and onions, it should be like a fragrance that you can bottle. It's just, just makes you feel so good. This. Thank you. And so funny, whenever I talk about this recipe, people are like spaghetti with tuna. They, they can't wrap their head around 
the spaghetti with tuna. I don't know if they're thinking it's like tuna salad or, you know, with mayonnaise in it. Um, and every time they have it, they're like, oh, that was so good. I just didn't know what to expect. So that's going to be sauteing. While that's sauteing, I'm going to open this can of tomatoes. Okay. And what I use is I use Tutoroso crushed tomatoes. Can you, let me see how you could see that. The Tutoroso crushed tomatoes in the green can. So you don't have to, when I was growing up, my mother would be straining the tomatoes, squeezing the tomatoes, all the seeds out and all that, or putting them in a blender. So this makes it much easier. So if you can hear that, can you hear that sizzling up a little bit? You don't want it to, to brown too much. I know that in my grandmother's recipe, and I'm actually using a recipe that my aunt Flora shared in the uh, Centennial Cookbook. I guess I'll show it over here. This is the Tuckahoe Centennial Cookbook. Came out for the, the 100th anniversary of Tuckahoe. Um, and I saw the recipe in here. And so hers is a little different than mine. I think that's really true that even though it's a family recipe, that we have a tendency to add our own um, little touches to it for what we like. And that's what you should do. So I'm sauteing this just so you can see. You want the, the onions to get soft. And the garlic is, be, be, be very careful though with garlic. You don't want the garlic to brown because it will make the sauce bitter. So you want to make sure that you're moving this around. It looks nice and mellow, just softening. Yeah, it sounds going to lower the heat a little bit. Elaine, there's a yes. question in chat box. Is that cookbook is still available? Do we have it in the library? Um, you know, I don't know. We do have two left at the Taco History Committee. Okay. Um, so I think that they're 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 twenty dollars. So if anybody's interested, if there's more than one person interested, maybe we'll have like a, a, a little raffle. We'll raffle it off. Um, so just let me know. You can you can email me tomorrow. I'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. But it is. It's a great. Uh, we've even. I said it would be great if we could digitize it and have it available for people. But we we're, we don't have that done yet. Lynn, can you show the title again, please? Yes. Let me just show this one. Let me put the tomatoes in and then I'll do that because that's okay. the that's the next thing. So I don't want no this. Problem. No problem. No, it's fine. It's real. As I say, this is real simple. As you could see, you know, this is this is, you know, something you, you kind of have to keep your eye on because you don't want it to burn. But we're almost there. Okay. All right. I think that that's ready. What do you think? Yeah. Yep. That looks good. Okay. So now I'm going to take the tomatoes and I'm just going to pour them in. Now, what I also do is I don't like to waste any of the tomato that's in the can. So I'll just put a little water in and I'll shake it. I'll just shake the water in the can and then I'll add that in there. Good to the last drop. And now I'm going to stir that up. Stir that up. Okay. So I'll let that sit for a second. I'll show you the book again. This is a wonderful cookbook. I know my mom was um, helped to work on it and to gather the recipes. So like that, can you see it? There you go. Um, and it's nice. It has it has 
pictures of like the Washington Hotel. So it has some historical places in here too. And it's broken down by um, different categories. So here's actually Mama's tuna sauce. And here are my notes that I made when I was adjusting it. Here's desserts, here's the ward house, the beautiful ward house. And in the back, it has an index. It also has little flaps you can put right your own recipes in, notes. But it, it has the index for different recipes. Um, I think it has two indexes. I guess just the index of the recipes. So we have a lot of our own personal family, rel my husband's relatives, our relatives, we've all grow, we all grew up here. Um, and I'm sure there's people that you know in here, here, maybe you're in here. So it's really a, it's a very nice, it's a very nice book. Let me just put this on the box here. Yeah. No. Okay, so. Is that boiling? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll just wait on that for a minute. Okay. So now we're going to add the other ingredients. I just want to take a look at the recipe because I told you I don't work with recipes usually. Okay, and tomatoes, oregano, parsley, basil, and cheese. So I have a little bit of oregano here. Again, I'm not a big fan of oregano. What is the oregano clause for there? Um, a quarter to a teaspoon. So the recipe calls for a quarter to a teaspoon. So it depends on your taste. Yeah, I usually, I, I like put it in my hand and let it go in because I'm really not a big oregano fan. So I have the option of not putting it all in if I want. So I put a little bit of that in. Now I also have fresh basil and parsley cut up in here, ready to go in. That's going in. How much did you use? And I used um, a handful of parsley and six to 10 basil leaves. Um, you could also use dried basil, but the fresh basil really makes it outstanding. And then we have Italian cheese. Um, what does it say in there with Italian cheese? I just want, I mean, I know what I'm gonna put in, but. It says four to six, uh, four to six uh, teaspoons. Four to six teaspoons of Italian cheese, okay? I use Locatelli Romano. Um, this is our favorite. I don't like Parmesan cheese, but you could use whatever you'd like, but this is the one that I would recommend, okay? And then I also use red wine. Uh, now my son John is on here. I know he loves this too. Um, and he will, you know, I know we do the same thing. Even if he's using George sauce, he'll add a little red wine to it. It just zips it up. And so I just add a couple of dollops of red wine. Do you want me to put it all? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. It's a little bit more because I'm finishing up that bottle. And now I'm going to mix that up. And you can see how that looks. It smells absolutely delicious. Or more into the pot. So oh, sorry. Can you see that? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. My, my producer is here helping. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you make the tuna sauce. The marinara. Yes, this is the, I mean, but this is the marinade. So, what's great about the marinade, like I said, here's the one I made this morning. Okay. And what's great about that is if you make a base sauce, you can freeze it. You can make a lot of it. You could use some of it for like a tuna sauce or something else. And you could freeze it for, for, for the future. Really, it's, it's very um, durable. Uh, and it's, it's, you can do so much with just a, a simple marinade. You could, you could also make meatballs and add meatballs to it, make a meat sauce. Um, it's a very versatile sauce. Okay. So while that is cooking up and my husband is going to put the spaghetti on, I wanted to just share with you a little PowerPoint that I put together about 
my, oh, he wants to show you the this, linguine. We're using the linguine. This is the Barilla linguine right here. that we're using. We like it, it's, um, it's hearty, it stands up nice to all the sauces. Okay, so I'm just gonna share with you, if you bear with me, a little tribute to my family, my grandma. Okay, first I have to just read it. Of course, nothing is where you think it's going to be. Hold on one second. Okay, can you see that? Yes. <clears throat> so this is where my grandmother was born in 1887 in Tedeschina, Italy. So she was born in a seaside town. Um, and so I'm sure these seafood dishes were um, dishes that the family would, would lean on um, for their meals. Let me just put my face in over there. Okay. Um, so I just want to show you a few. Isn't it beautiful? I've never been there myself. This is where it's located. So it's um, south of Rome. It's on the Apian Way. Have any of you been to um, this part of Italy? Maybe taken the you know the route route down towards Naples. Um, my grandfather was from Fragenone, right here. And um, Terracina, because of its location, it was marshy uh, and uh, prone to malaria. So in the warm, uh, the warm months, they would go up into the hills. Um, and that's apparently how they met. He was from Fragenone, she was from Terracina, and they would go up into the hills during those malarial months and um, I guess different, I think they may have been working on um, uh, some harvest or, uh, you know, we don't have all of the, the story, but I just like that little, that little romantic story. That's how they met. Vincenzo and Maria. So just to tell you a little bit about Cetashina, because it's a resort now, it's very well known. Um, and so it, it shows right here that it's uh, 76 kilometers um, southeast of Rome by rail and 35 miles by, by the Via Appia by car. And it's an ancient town. It appears in ancient sources with two names, the Latin Tedeschina and the Volscian Anzor. The latter is the name of Jupiter himself as a youth and was the tutelary god of the city venerated on the Mons Neptunius current Mount St. Angelo, where a temple dedicated to him still exists. The modern town occupies the site of the old one, and the present piazza is the ancient forum, and the Roman pavement of slabs of travertine with the inscription A. Emilius A.S. in letters once filled in bronze is well preserved. And I thought this was interesting. The Festival of the Sea takes place in July and occupies an important place in Tedeschina's folklore is linked to the town's long fishing history. So these are my grandparents, and this is my grandmother and my grandfather, and this is my father sitting up in front. He was the second to youngest of nine children. Um, they have seven here, and one, my grandmother is actually expecting my Aunt Flora, who shared this recipe in the Centennial book. Um, and they lost, they did lo lose a child as well, my Uncle Jack. And here's my dad with his mother and father. Um, and my grandmother, when I looked at her, she always reminded like she had that ancient Roman look, like an Etruscan regal. I could just, you know, see her in those ancient times. Um, when I read about that history, I certainly understand it. And here are my grandparents at their 40th anniversary with all their family around because that's what we're doing tonight. We're eating, we want to sit together um, and, and enjoy food. And that's it's really, really important. It's always been an important part of fa our family. And I'm sure 
all of you can relate to that as well. So, and my aunt Flora, who um, shared this, is right over here next to her mom, um, holding onto her shoulders. So your father. My father is back Thank here with the curly black hair way in the back there, yes. So my son, John, uh, who's also on this call, he decided, I'm gonna get emotional now. He decided for his, um, his honeymoon that he wanted to go to, to Italy and he wanted to go see Tedeschina. So he is the first one in our family to see where my grandmother was born. So I'm just gonna share a couple of pictures of, of the beautiful sights in Tedeschina. John, I don't know if you want to say anything. His gorgeous, beautiful sight. Oh, you're doing a great job, mom. <clears throat> There's his wife, Jenny. And that's an overview. And yeah, there's all those shots that you see right there of, of the elevator. That was uh, the temple of um, the Greek temple. That was Jupiter, the Jupiter oh, yeah, temple. Jupiter, that's right, yeah. Yeah. It, it was absolutely stunning. Yeah. So, you know, I'm sharing this because some of you may be going to Italy and some of you may be in that region and it's a place that you might want to stop. So I asked John to send these to me today because I thought it would be nice to put a little personal touch on our program. So um, thank you for watching those few little personal slides. And let's see, how is the spaghetti doing? We've got about seven minutes to go with that. Okay, great. So now let's talk about the tuna. Okay, so now I'm going to open the tuna. And remember that the tuna is cooked. So, you know, you're not worried too much about about heating it up too much. Yeah, the hard part is getting this plastic off the tuna. This is the most difficult part of my program so far. Can't get the plastic off. I like to use three cans because we like it on the chunky side. So just going to open up the tuna. I'm gonna give it to Sal. He's gonna drain it. Okay. So you're just gonna squeeze the top on and squeeze the just oil squeeze, out. Squeeze the middle here over the sink. It's the out. Is everybody getting hungry? Is anybody cooking along with me or is everyone just watching? I just ate my dinner. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I like to just watch. I'm I'm not that coordinated to um, cook and I, I just enjoy watching the cooking program. Then I could try it myself. And again, this is tuna in oil. I like the tuna in oil. Uh, there's a higher sodium content, or at least there was. I don't know, maybe I'm gonna be proved wrong about that. It's a little bit saltier, so I like the oil. Okay, so he's just adding that to the sauce again that I made this morning. Why don't you show And now I'm gonna so show you the one that we just did. You see how, how nice that's cooking up? Does that look awesome? Oh, and it smells heavenly. And then this is the one that I made this morning that he is going to add the tuna to. Can you I see, can't it? see it? Here we go. Okay. So that's the one that's yeah. That's cooked, okay? So we just take this the tuna. is the one that's cooking, and that's the one that's cooked. Take the tuna and put it right in, just the way it is. And Can. And again, if you prefer less tuna, then you put less in, but we like we like the tuna. So it's a three. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. They can see again how quick a meal this can be. Um it's, you can be doing other things while this is heating up, while this is while this is bubbling and cooking. You can be doing other things and all you have to do is add the tuna. So I'll just show. And when the spaghetti is done, you're gonna see we're going to top it. So all you do is just gently 
fold the tuna into the sauce. We like it chunky. So just fold it in. Okay, so you want to show the spaghetti too that you got that cooking? Yeah. The spaghetti is here. And he has the timer on. Yeah, so we got about three minutes to go. See, there's a linguine. And you know, you want to taste it. We'll be tasting it when it's done. Some people like it al dente, which is a little chewy. And some people like it cooked a little longer. So it's whatever your taste is. There's no right or wrong way. And the good thing about the barilla is that um, you don't have to cook it perfectly. It doesn't fall apart if you cook it a little longer. So yeah, it's a very hard, like it's it. a hearty pasta. Absolutely. Okay, so while we're waiting for that, um, we've also made a nice tossed salad to go with it with some avocado on top. So we have, we'll have the spaghetti and tuna and a nice salad. And we also like to serve the Arthur Avenue brand. We get this at Sea Town. It's called Terranova bread. Um, it's from Arthur Avenue. It comes in a round loaf. So it looks like this. We get the cut one too sometimes, but this is what it looks like. You can get it at Pasquale's. You can get it there. Have, they have it at a, a lot of the delis have. And this, this, is, bread. this is like traditional Italian bread. Now, actually where the library is right along in the community center, there was a bakery uh, that my grandmother used to send my aunt Flora with a wagon and the bakery would bake the bread for Italian families. Um, Cause I guess they would bake like a bunch of bread at once. They'd bring their dough down. The bakery would put them all in the big ovens and then the children would bring them back home again. So just a little so gonna, trivia gonna, for you. I'm gonna cut it and show you kind of how to cut the bread. Cause some people get overwhelmed with with cutting a whole loaf of Italian bread. I'll just show you the way that I do it. I'll show it over here. Okay. Can you see the bread? Okay. I'm just seeing, I'm trying to see what I'm seeing on the camera. Okay. okay. So normally uh, what I do, rather than cutting the bread this way, I, I cut it in half. So I find where, where is there a, um, a natural crease, so. I have it right here. That's a steak. Oh, that's fine. Okay. So I cut the bread in half. I put one half here, and then I put the other half here. So which makes it a lot easier for me to cut it. And then I cut it this way. What's nice about this bread is it's crusty on the outside, but it's very soft on the inside. So it's very delicate. Whoops. Sorry. Just got a phone call. There you go. Okay. So now you see that the bread is cut so like the eel, you keep it that way. Great, thanks, Sam. And there it okay. goes. So let's come back over here. There's my other computer. There we go. Let's take a look now at how our sauce is coming. So this is the sauce that I just made tonight. And I would say it's, you know, probably needs to cook another 15, 20 minutes. You want to cook it about 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. And then this is our finished sauce right over here. Okay. Can everybody see nope. that? Whoops. Nope. Sorry. There you go. So that's the finished sauce. 
And okay. now we're ready to okay. drain and so we. Okay, he's going to get that drained mm -hmm. and we're gonna put that in a dish so you can see what it looks like. Okay. How are you enjoying it so far? Any questions? Yes, serrated knife for bread. He used a steak knife. He was supposed to use this knife. I was saying that to him as he was doing it. So he should have used the bread knife. I, I noticed that too. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad. I don't know if you heard me saying you're using the steak knife. You're using this. The, you know, That's knife. okay. It cuts. Yes. No, thing. I know, but you don't. You want to be a little safer, you know. So. <laughs> I live dangerously. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so normally, what we do is we heat we heat the dish. We put some hot water in there and we heat it. So that when we put the the spaghetti in the the um, it's a little bit warm. Okay. Um, now I'm just draining the the linguine. Okay, over the sink, and now we put it right in. Okay, there's the linguine. Wayne, do you want to be honors of? No, I'll let you do it. That's okay. fine. I want to make sure the camera can see it. Okay. Well, this is here. So now we have. Land. Okay. Okay. So we're all set now. Just. Okay. Spoon it over the spaghetti. No, I like. I like it in there so rather than just putting it on top i try to mix it in and i do the opposite i put it all on top so you do it any way you want yeah. <laughs> okay that's why we're usually not cooking together we usually cook <laughs> our own our own way <laughs> yes <laughs> many a spirited conversation that's been over a Leave a lot difference. <laughs> 40, 40 years. It's going to be 41. Yeah, that's right. Oh. Cooking together a long time. Yeah. And we've been having this meal that whole time. And, again, and, I, and I never had it until I. You came You dating. came here yeah. we were dating. You had it. My father made it. Yeah. And I recoiled when I first heard about <laughs> he it. He didn't like the idea. And boy, oh boy, I am a big fan now. It's so good. Okay, so that is the spaghetti with tuna dish. So you can take a look at it. I'm trying to get a good okay. view. Can everybody see that? Looks delicious. Okay, but we're not done because we still have our dessert to talk about. Oh my gosh. So this we're gonna talk about the peach melba. Again, oh, another wow. easy dish. Really, this, it looks beautiful, delicious. Thank you. This dish I attribute to my um, my my grandmother, and the peach melba that and I'll just keep the camera on it so you can take a look at it. The peach melba that we're going to do is a a, a dessert that my mother in law used to serve when she had company. And again, I love easy and. Whenever I have company, I make spaghetti with tuna. And people are like, oh, this is so delicious. And whenever I make the peach melba, people say the same thing. Very, very simple. The so Sal is getting the ice cream. I'm going to get the bowl. So what you need for this is you need a bowl. You need the Pepperidge Farm pirouettes. I'm using the ones with the chocolate hazelnut, and I'll put them up on the close camera. And <clears throat> Melba sauce. So we're going to use vanilla ice cream. Okay, oh, I can move this back and do right. it here. Our yes. pals from Vermont. This is good. Ben and Jerry. Okay. All right. All right. 
You could use any vanilla ice cream that you want. I didn't even know we had this. I had Briars too. That's right. Okay. okay. All right. I'm gonna let Sal. I like to use the scooper. Okay. You can I like it this. shaped. You know, a certain okay. way. You think it's too hard for that? No, this is a perfect spoon for you. All right. Well, I'll let you do it any way you want. Okay. Let, let me get I'm the whipped this, cream. This okay. All right. So, got the ice cream here. A little hard, so. And this thing, this spoon is perfect for it because it's so hard. Okay. But this is what I use because I like the shape of a regular. But well, do you want to try it? Yeah, I did these no, two. No, it's too hard, but I just want yeah, to this thing you know, is like Mine would have been nice little squeeze yes. in there. So. <laughs> it's okay. Next time we do this, we'll keep the ice cream out. Yes. So that's the you learn. Okay. Has anybody had a pirouette? Anybody here had a, a pepper charm pirouette? Yes. They they come plain or they come with chocolate. I like the ones with the with the chocolate hazelnut. They're just a little bit more. Okay. Makes it a little so more special. Okay. Okay. So, you ready for this really, really difficult dish? <laughs> okay. We have the ice cream in the bowl. We open up the Melba sauce. I ordered this on on Amazon because I wasn't sure if I could get it around here, and I needed to get it in time when I was thought we were doing it at the beginning of July. But you could look around and see what stores have it. My father-in-law had a fruit and vegetable store. He used to sell it. So I used to get it there. I'm gonna drizzle the Melba sauce onto the ice cream. And Melba sauce is like a, um, a raspberry sauce. This one has black and red raspberries. And we tested out two, two different Melba sauces. We weren't sure which one we were going to like. We had our best friends as taste testers for the, the test meal we did back at the end of June. We decided this one was the best. So you can see that, all right. All right. Okay. So let me get a spoon. Here. Oh, that's the wrong, that's a cheese spoon. Get we don't want here. cheese. We like cheese, but not that much. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay, and, this, and the peach is froze in the back of the refrigerator, okay? <laughs> Actually, I was supposed to put the peaches underneath the Melba sauce, but it's oh, wow. okay. So this is. It's 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 ice. It's, it's water. So this is called a peach surprise. <laughs> even this, even the peach was surprised. I like my peaches cold, unfortunately. <laughs> but you get the idea, folks, right? You're <laughs> forgiving. Okay, so if you have a can. You could usually yeah. get, you don't know, put it in the back of the refrigerator. Yeah, I'll put it in the back of the refrigerator, but you could usually get uh, four servings out of that. Put some more Melba sauce on there. I was supposed to put that on top of there. And then I put a little bit of whipped cream on. And a pirouette. And that is your dessert. 